Hello, and welcome to In Between the Pages with James Live Jr. I am James Live Jr. Good night, everybody. Just kidding. We are here. I have an interview. <laughs> that can't be it. Well, that great intro. That's it. No, I actually have a guest. We're here on JLJ Media, and I'm the JLJ of JLJ Media. I say that 10 times fast. And I am here to talk about newspapers, online, old school, whatever, but getting mm -hmm. your information from a, from a trusted source. Um, yeah. and this person has decided to create one to start one. It's called Sound Sorceresses. See, that five times fast also. So I have her right. all the way from the southern parts of Minnesota. It's <laughs> 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 All right, so <Rachel. laughs> Hi, James. Thank you so much for having me on. My pleasure. Uh, we've been getting to know each other for the last couple of weeks. So it's been great. And she's a great person. Yeah. So after you watch this interview, which you follow her, we'll tell you where to follow her and all that stuff. Um, but first of all, I'd like to ask, how are you doing? Oh, thank you for asking. I'm doing well. Um, we are recording this at the end of my day, so hopefully I don't run out of juice. And your energy is very infectious. And so I don't think that that's going to be the case. But um, yes. But yeah, doing well. How are you? I'm good. I was just telling her off camera how it's hot here in Los Angeles. Um, and I, I had some, uh, this sounds so, I had some fans, but I had some fans who literally are fans of mine who came to town and wanted to meet me. So we met for lunch and we had a really nice lunch today, but it was, I think, I think I got some coloring. I got some sweat. I mean, it was just, it was like, it was very warm today. And they were like, why is it warm in LA? I'm like, global boiling, are they calling it now? So I guess they're calling it. Uh, so, right. <laughs> yeah, not global warming anymore, Rachel. I heard it's global boiling or something. I'm like, I mean, I believe it. <laughs> I do too. I believe it. Um, but anyway, so I had, I had a good day. I had a good day. It's, it's nice meeting people who watch my show. So it's nice to meet yeah. them. So shout out to uh, Charmander. That, that's her online name. And, uh, and to Care Bear. So nice to meet you both today. It was a lot of fun. Um, here on Jenner. I, I just, you know, they're my, they're my love name so much. <laughs> yes. I, I love it. So they, they watch these shows and they, they end up liking me. I love it. And, our, and, and my guest. Um, so okay, so I want to I want to go straight right into it because it's very interesting. Um, I've been in a few online newspapers, online digital print media. Um, print media is still online, especially it's still happening. There's still regular media too, but it's still happening mm -hmm. and everything. So before we get to what it is you do and stuff, what is some of your background? Are you are you were you a journalism major? Were you in other media? Like what 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 is some of your back? Brief to speed, like what's some of your background? Yeah, so my background, honestly, is really all over the place. Um, I think maybe like a lot of millennials, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like that's just kind of the world that we've become adults in. Um, now, I've always been really interested in storytelling, right? From the time that I was a little kid. Um, but I also grew up in kind of a culture where uh, women didn't have jobs or careers, right? Like if you were going to go to college, it was um, so that you could be kind of a better parent. And I think that that has a lot of merit, but it also means that nobody ever said to me when I was growing up, like, hey, Rachel, have you ever thought about being a journalist? Uh, so I, when I initially went to college and there's like I think more story there than we have time for so I'm gonna kind of condense it a little like the bit bridge version like we'll get, we'll get to right. that. one day we'll get uh, to that right now yeah right but not right now um so I initially thought that I would want to pursue a law degree um and very specifically to represent uh people in family court who had experience you know like family violence. Yeah. Um, and so I pursued a bachelor's degree in gender studies. Now, I unfortunately figured out a little too late that um, like the way that lawyers work, you know, or like a billing and all this other stuff does not make for a very sustainable life or career. Um, so I went, okay, well, never mind about the law stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um 
I mean, I still finish my bachelor's degree. So, right, like, if you want to talk to me about gender, yeah. like, I'm, I kind of know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, stepped out of school for a while, ended up working in public higher education. Um, and that is still, like, the day job that's paying the bills. Um, but when, after my second daughter was born, because I'm also a mom, um, my spouse had finished his master's degree and I went, you know, it is time to go back to school for a graduate degree. Uh, so I got a master's degree in public and nonprofit administration. So kind of staying in that government field. Um, but while I was working on that degree, um, one of my very good friends and I started a podcast called What the Finance. Um Kind of, I mean, right, because we, we kind of have some potty mouths going on, oh, but yeah. also money is frustrating. Right? That's a great title. Oh, my um, God. <laughs> I, lo I love it. I, I love it. Thank you. <laughs> great title. Um, so, yeah, we're we're on a summer break right now, but we'll be coming back soon. But um, as we were, like, we kind of just had the attitude, like, hey, we're going to try this and we're going to see how it goes. And I realized, oh my gosh, I really love podcasting. Like this is a storytelling medium that I, I'm getting really fired up about and really excited about. Um, and so now we're at st I'm still working in public higher education and and doing all of that, um, but also kind of working to make this pivot into. Uh, I mean, really, ultimately, right, audio storytelling. Um, but the magazine is kind of part of that whole we'll get into that, endeavor. Yeah. yeah, so we'll get into that. But that's kind of the abridged version of okay. what's bringing me up to you right now. <laughs> I, want to touch, I want to touch on something, as you said. Yeah. So we look at the women in your family that came before you. Uh, any of them go to college? Yeah, so a lot of my aunts and cousins did yeah. go to college. Um, and actually, funnily enough, now that I am an adult, a lot of my aunts are also realizing like, oh, you, right, it's 2023. We can't actually make it on one income anymore, <laughs> right? Like you could in the 80s and the 90s. Right, right, right. So, um, so like within the family, we are kind of seeing this evolution, um, that, Honestly, for my younger cousins, I'm very excited for them to, that they're kind of going to grow up with this model, right? Of like, this is what it looks like if you, um, right, if you have both parents working or on the flip side, these are the sacrifices that you have to make to make ends meet on a single income. Yeah. Um, so... But yeah, pretty much everyone in my family has gone to college, um, which is very valuable to me in my day job um, because the students that I often work with are first generation, actually both, they're first generation college students, but they're also very often first generation Americans. Um, and so I'm a third generation college student. So I kind of have like, hey, okay, this was the deal when my grandpa was going to college. And now here's, this is the deal when my parents are going to college. And now here's, here's what's in the soup for us is, you know, yeah, people I'm, going to college in yeah. the 2000s. <laughs> I'm, I'm second generation college student. Um, I am a third generation on one side American. And well, I, I guess I'm, I'm also third on both sides. I don't, I've got, because one's the Caribbean. So I guess, yeah, I'm third on both, I'm third on both. Second or third on both sides, um, but co college. Uh, my grandparents didn't go to college. There was no. There was no they didn't go to college. Um, yeah. They were successful. They they mm -hmm. found their way and they were successful. Uh, but it was my father who went to college. His brothers were like, like they, they. My brother raised them, and they and most of them went to college. And became very successful. So that was the model for us. Was that also being African American was like, if you got to make it in America, you got to go to college, and so. Right. Half of my siblings and I got to went to college, which in some cases in my neighborhoods was like, out of nine kids, six, seven, eight went to college. Like, yeah, we did. We all went to college. <laughs> Most of us have masters and doctorates. Like, we really that was education was very um, 
you're right about that. If it's, if you see it, then you want to try to be it sometimes. Um, yeah. Right. And it, there's a feeling with the opposite. But I was saying for you, because you, you said something that was so profound. It's like, you know, in some parts of the country, in some cultures, it's all about you, you grow up to be a wife and a mother and home stuff and yard. And they don't say career, right? They don't, right? That's kind of a thing, isn't it? Right. Well, and I think, I, well, I don't think this is kind of proven. There's also that racial component to it, too, right? Like, um, as a white woman, uh, I am very insulated by both white supremacy and patriarchy to go, yes, this is a totally acceptable and valid life choice that my culture is not going to, um, my culture or culture at large isn't going to say, oh, I can't believe how lazy Rachel is that she doesn't have a job that she's just home with her kids and making the meals. Right. Like, um, like my non-white peers do not have that social luxury of not being judged. Right. If they don't go to work right. outside of their homes. Cause like, let's be real staying home and taking care of your kids and taking care of the house is really freaking hard. Oh, <laughs> yes. You know? <laughs> right. I'm sorry, all the pandemic parents, I was like, thank God my kids are grown. Uh, I don't know how you guys all did it, because I was like, I just, I'm just more power to you. Honestly, I don't really know how we did it either. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big blur now. You just did like, it. We just, yeah. I mean, that's kind of like having a newborn, right? Like, right. people go, is your baby sleeping okay? And you're like, uh, Girl, I, I was tired maybe. the first two years. The first two years, the whole two years, I was just constantly tired. But somehow I went to work with the school, took care of her, and somehow I, mean, I did it. Right. Like everybody's alive, and right. somehow you <laughs> fooled That's everybody into thinking you're competent as an adult. So <laughs> I always I always say to my dog, I go, hello, you live, you survive somehow, and you're fed. I mean, yeah. Right. Pretty much. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you're just a great analogy. Just like, did you just, people ask you, how do you do it? You just do it. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. the same analogy for you guys. You got through it somehow because you just, you, just figured, you had to figure it out. So you figured it out. Exactly. Yeah. But I just, but, but I still bow to you and other parents who had, who had kids at home. I, and I felt bad for the kids too. I felt bad for the kids too. But I understood why everything was happening. But it's like, it's like that's still tough. And, I always oh, yeah. I changed I changed my language, Rachel. To I um, I don't say stay at home mom. I don't say, you know, uh, housewife. I say house managers. I say you know, the CEO of, of homemaking. You know, they, they, <laughs> I, because literally, for a lot of women who are at home, take kids. It's also they they are doing schedules. They're bouncing back and forth. Because one kid's hard. Maybe you have two or three. It's even harder. Then you're matching all their schedules. With the, that includes all the games, activities, doctor's appointments, dentist appointments. Oh, yeah. You got to make sure there's ketchup in the refrigerator. You know, you got to take care of this. I mean, there's, there's like so many things that you're handling that that's why I always think mothers make, would make great CEOs and great, you know, managers because <laughs> you have to do it anyway, right? And make sure they're right. okay and give love and, you know, and be the wife if you have a wife or a partner. If you have a partner, you be the partner. You know, you got, you got all these things you got to do. Right, right. Ooh, that's crazy, Rachel. Oh, that's crazy. So, okay. So, you were like, I'm a strong... Were you well, Were you always a strong young woman? Were you, were you always, like, type of kid? And, like, you're just like, I'm just going to do things? Were you kind of that kind of person? Um, You know, I kind of had to find my own way with that. Because, I think, naturally, yes, I want to... Right, like, my inclination very strongly is, here's a problem. How am I going to solve the like the challenge, whatever it is. Um, but I think, and I'm talking a lot about like socialization. And so I'm yeah. at risk of sounding like a broken record, right? Like there's also a lot of value placed on being kind of quiet and demure and all of those things. And so um, I, that tenacity has always been in me, but kind of figuring out how to, like manifest that outside of myself is where that where the challenge really okay. comes in. Okay. You know, I was I was a go you know. kid. I was I was I was an overachiever. I know I was. I look back, I'm like, I was an overachiever. I didn't realize until I was grown. 
But I was always, <laughs> I always, I always said yes to stuff. Mm. Yes, I want to try that. I want to try this. I want to try it. So we we'll go. You always experience this. I go because I said yes. I just, I was always so curious, and I wanted. So I don't know if you were that type of person, or if you grew into that later, where you're like, I'm going to try stuff and be fearless. Yeah. No, I think it was more that it was always in me, and then realized, um, like, oh, this thing is in me, and it's not bad. Like, I can do something with this. Um, and it's hard to, like, put words to it, right? Like, you can say, oh, like, being a go-getter or being tenacious or whatever. But um, just recognizing that working through things and maybe not getting it right the first time, that there's not actually any shame in that. Because, like, there's that piece to it, too, right? Like, oh, well... It didn't work, so too bad. I guess you're not going to do it again. But, like, there might be something in you that goes, I, ah, but I've really got to figure out how to make this thing work. Yeah. So, kind of, like, building that piece of it that, like, okay, maybe this exact approach, like, this approach didn't work, but, like, let's tweak this thing and try it again. Well, you know, I ask you these questions. You know. I ask you these questions because mindset's very important, as you know. And yeah. the Wasi shows, they always wonder, the difference between them and us is that we took the extra step to do whatever it is we want to do. So I was talking about the mindset of, like, where is Rachel coming from and how she can? Because if they're like you or similar, they'd be thinking, well, she did it. So maybe... I could do it, too. Right. Well, but, yeah. but, but it's also that thing of, you know, what... So what does she do to overcome any doubt and get to that mindset of, I'll try it. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Uh, it's a great mindset. But people always like to know, like, how does that, like, how do you get there where you're like, eh, it's okay. And so how did you get there with that, Miss Rachel? Yeah. So I don't even know if I could like name a single event, right? Like, oh yeah. Like, I think at some point, like, you just have to keep on, some of it is in you and you have to act whether you um, understand why or not. Um, But then I think some of it, too, is just, like, um, like, I don't want to say failure, but I am going to say failure. Um, (laughs) Like, learning from the failure, right? Like, um or maybe learning from like kind of that feeling of emptiness that you have right um like kind of coming into the the magazine a little bit uh i think podcasting is a medium that is so so dominated right by um white guys which right like we know and love many white men um right right um but if you are kind of outside of that very privileged group you can feel really isolated and so then you go okay like but i know that there are other people who are like me right exactly like you were just saying uh like what do i do to bring those people to me and so then you just um right like start find your way. Fin- find your way. right like you kind of find it right like i started with the finance with my friend um realized oh my gosh like i really love podcasting what is out there in the podcasting community right like okay holy crap there's like all this social media and there's stuff on linkedin and there are google groups and there's um or there's pop people on circle and it's like there's all of this stuff and so you kind of just i mean it really is like seeing if spaghetti is done right you throw it at the wall and you see hey did that noodle stick okay then i think the spaghetti is done right like you kind of just keep trying things that feel and this i think is important right you try things that feel authentic to you uh And that's what gets you, it's really kind of to like to build your community, right? Like there are 
and we were talking about this offline, right? A couple of weeks ago, um, right? Like the way that I build something is not going to be the same way that some guy is going to build something. But if I do it the way that feels authentic to who I am as a person, then that's going to, that's going to call other people into the community, right? Like we had never met before. Right. And now I'm like, no, James is (laughs) right. Like Mm -hmm. James is my people. Um, Right. Like you just keep on. And it can feel a little bit like you're out there in the wilderness for like a long time, honestly, before you get to um, feeling like what you have to offer is like valuable to somebody other than yourself. Very true. It's one of those things, it's, the world is so vast, the media world. Right. Uh, everyone, everybody and their grandmothers has a podcast. Everybody and their grandmothers has a blog. Everybody and their grandmothers can go on Reddit <laughs> or 4chan or or threads or spellable or spill and, and write what they want. Um, so it's kind of like, almost like a needle in a haystack reverse. Like you're the, you're the needle in this giant haystack. You're trying to find your place on top of right, it. You're trying to find the other needles exactly. that are yeah, hiding out like there. Exactly. That's <laughs> exactly. That's right, girl. I like that better. That's right. That's right. That's right. Then you're like, you're going to, so it's kind of like there is this thing where you feel like you're in the weeds, kind of just like a, like a little satellite on your own. We'll throw all the, we'll throw all the metaphors in there. Um, is everybody just in there? But like, you feel like you're saying you're like in your own orbit and then you're trying to find another, another, you know, another person in their orbit. You go, oh, we connect. And then that's when it starts to happen. When you start yes. finding your people, your tribe, your village, whatever you want to call it, it's because it's just, it's just there's so much, there's so many. Tri- I was over there just saying, I have this is bad, folks. I have seven subscription services streaming, and I literally one night was just like, okay, what's on Hulu? There are twenty shows that I have not even watched yet. What's on Apple TV? There's twenty shows I've not watched yet. This is gonna Paramount Plus. Like I literally. There's so much choice and there's so many mm-hmm. things I would like to see. I'll never get to it all. So it's like you have yeah. to kind of go, I mean, I'm just too busy a person, but you just you just can't. There's this new right. stuff coming out all the time. So I go I look for certain ones that I go to all the time. And that's what we always that's what we as creators looking for are folks to find us. Exactly. Yeah. Find exactly. us. So uh, so let's get into the magazine itself. So itself. Okay, so I want to ask first the name of the magazine and what and how you describe it, what it's about. Sure. So the name of the magazine is Sound Sorceresses, um, which is simultaneously, right, um, for those of us that are in podcasting and do kind of like that and behind the scenes engineering, right? Like what we're doing is magic. Like, yes, there's science, but... Right. There's like kind of some human magic that's going on there. Um, Also, it's a little bit of me um, thumb in my nose at the shade that the letter S gets. (laughs) Oh, okay. Within the community, right? Like, I see a lot of hate for the letter S. And I went, you know what? Let's just take that and flip it. Um, Like that. So that's. <laughs> I, I got. Um, I can talk about some changes. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is weird. Okay, so many about people know that out there. You may not know this or not, but I'm also a recording artist. So mm-hmm. I produce my own music. Well, I have producers. I like, do my own produce my music. I have like ten albums. Yeah, yeah. Over the years, they all start with S's. Every album title. Start oh my gosh! <laughs> Here's what's I funny. love that. So the first album is called "Songs from My Inside Voice." I thought that'd be a great title because it's actually coming out of me. These are some these are song first songs that were written. So they're yeah. poetry. So I did that. So then I did an album after that. It was called Speaking with Strings. And it was a orchestra behind me, and I was doing songs in front of it. This guy goes, oh, both your titles have S's in them. I was like, oh, okay. I didn't I never thought much about it. And then my third album, I was like, I had a dream. And <laughs> the dream was 
Salty Clouds and Sunflower Dreams. I was like, that would be a title of a great title of an album. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> it is. I, so I named it my third album is Salty Clouds and Sunflower Dreams. And I had an illustrator. It's a really beautiful cover. It's all it's me and a cartoon version of my band and a cartoon version. But it was like I started something, so every album starts with an S. So it's funny you mentioned that. So I'm working on my next album. It's a Christmas <laughs> album called Silver Bells and Disco Balls. So yes. it's, it's a yeah. dance. <laughs> so but I'm keeping the S theme going. I'm just gonna keep it going. So I'm with you. So I know I know there was hard things for S's. I'm gonna keep the S thing going. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> love it. I love it. Okay. So she yeah, so it's called Sound Sorceresses. And so what mm -hmm. is what is the magazine about? Sure. So what Sound Sorceresses does um features up to 10 women. Um, or, and this is a little bit loose, right? Like also non, like non-binary femme presenting folks, um, who are working in podcasting. Um, now the intent behind it really was, um, myself and Steph Fuccio, who is also just like a powerhouse in podcasting. I think she's amazing. Um, she and I kind of started talking to each other about how frustrated we were that women weren't getting highlighted as technical experts, right? Um, like if there is ever a news article or a podcast interview or whatever about um, like a very technical aspect of audio production, it's always men or almost always men. Um, and what we were finding was that if we made comments right, either on social media or like wrote an email, something like that, right? Like, hey, I really appreciated your article. Um, it's really too bad that you didn't have any women. And we would all, like, she and I both would hear back, like, oh, there's just not any women to be had. And we're going, oh, really? Uh, what about both of us? <laughs> right? Like, we're... <laughs> um, it started happening so often that I went, okay, I have to do something about this, right? Um, and so that's really where it was born. The idea was women highlighting their technical skills in podcasting. Um, so I hatched this little idea. I started working on it. Uh, and then as I'm kind of bringing it out into the world, with the first, for our first set of 10, because we have a great edi edition that's coming out October 1st, what I really started finding was that women had a lot to say about both their technical skill in podcasting, but also about just their lived experiences as women and femme presenting folks working in podcasting that needed to be kind of incorporated into this whole enterprise. Um, and so what has really happened, I think is super beautiful is that we have women who are talking about their technical skills, but also talking about that interpersonal component that comes in um, when you're uh, just a woman or a woman of color or that you're representing a bunch of some other minoritized populations. Like, what does that look like? And where are your spaces for expressing that? And there aren't many. And so I'm really proud that Sound Sources is, is one of those spaces yeah. uh, where that perspective can be represented. Okay, I like that. So, okay, so now, so it's 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 basically, I'm going to make sure watch, watch my terms. It's kind of <laughs> by women, women presenting for for an audience, I mean, for the for the audience that that appreciates that and appreciates the stories that come out of that. Yes. Yeah, so I'm excited to think right. Yes, good day. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. No, yeah, because there's a whole debate on that. That's last another show. Uh, there's a whole other show. Uh, but, right. Uh, right. Yeah. I don't know. But okay. So yeah. So okay. Good. So that's where the sorceress has come. The name comes from. Also, I see. Also. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> so. You are the kind of Mickey Magic. Uh, yeah. You know, the uh, that side of the Mickey Magic, um, and so. 
I was how I'm sorry, how how is the frequency? Is it once a month? Oh, sure. So it's a quarter. So the magazine itself is quarterly. So it comes out four okay, times quarterly. a year. Okay. Um we do also have um a newsletter that comes out twice a month. Okay. That is kind of serving as uh because um, of course the first edition is not out yet um so the newsletter really is kind of serving as a teaser yeah right like hey make sure that you are right like here's something really valuable that you can incorporate into your practice but also make sure that you subscribe uh so that you can get you know all that sweetness for your oh, audio I think, practice I, I, think I think it's very you know? cool that, i think it's very cool that you're saying, okay, let me find people who are marginalized, a group, um, and let's make a space for them. Uh, that's something a lot of folks are looking for a space, but you're like, I'm going to help create it. Um, did you ever think you'd be that kind of person? Did you ever think, you ever think you'd, be, that you'd be doing that? Yeah, I mean, so one of my favorite quotes ever is um from Tr Shirley Chisholm she was the first black woman to run for president um yes and I'm it's my favorite quote and I'm probably going to botch it anyway um but she was really known for saying if they don't give you a seat at the table and you bring your own chair um which I think is a really empowering idea but I think that at this point bring your own table like Right, like we've got to stop carrying a folding chair under our arms all the time, and we've just got to build the table. Exactly, I'm right there. Right. Building the table. Shit, yes. Right, so right, if there are, um, no, I'm with you. The the folks who are usually in the rooms and making the decisions, right? Like part of my goal is for them to be kind of like side eye and going, hey, look. Well, Look at look at them over there. Like their table is way nicer than than our table. Like, uh, and I would not ask anybody in that in that group of people to uh, schlep a chair around with them all over the place. But <laughs> um, I really do think that you know, different from when Shirley Chisholm was running for president in the seventies, that we need to stop showing up in places that are making us beg to be there. And we just need to make our own places that are really amazing um, and accepting and inclusive and all of that really wonderful thing that makes our world a great place to be. Now I want, I just want to add something before people start yelling at me or you. <laughs> they may, I, I disrupt all the time. So people, people, I disrupt everything, but I want to make sure people know that we both, Rachel and I both understand because I was part of some of those movements. Sometimes we had to bring that folding chair. Mm -hmm. and, get, and so we can get in and, you know, it was very important. We didn't have the, we didn't even have sometimes the resources to do our own. For a lot of time, it wasn't until the 80s, women couldn't even get their own credit card without a, without a man, you know. Oh, right, right. Or, or, or get a house or get a bank account without a husband or father. I mean, I was saying there was sometimes we had to kind of bust the doors down and try to get included. But I'm with Rachel. Which I wish I know we had to do that. But I'm with Rachel today in 2023. Now, fuck all that. Do this time for the just you do you build it yourself. You build it yourself, mm -hmm. and then they will come. Right. I mean, and hopefully, this isn't necessarily like the field of dreams, but. <laughs> <laughs> but but but, 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 but my whole thing is yeah, yeah. we have to, we have nowadays we have to stop asking like you just said stop asking and begging to be included in that and make mm -hmm. our own and make that just make people want to beg to be in that I mean I don't you want know, to sense so we sort of be like that yeah, yeah, yeah. be like if we're if we're tired of Gucci and all these things over here then why can't we have a brand by someone else be just as important as and valued as that that's the kind of point I'm trying to make I think right right. Like we don't need right, like we don't need any more Chanel that no. has never apologized for being involved with the Nazis. Exactly. We need something new. <laughs> yes. No, I'm saying, but my whole thing is I agree with you. Yeah. I, I complete that whole thing. I just no. think it's a wonderful thing to create a space for yourself. Great create, create yourself.
Um, and I think kind of the piece with the, um, for it being a quarterly magazine, uh, that is also kind of a space building technique, right? Um, I think I talked in the beginning a little bit about being a parent, but um, my spouse and I do have three young kids. So um, some of like any project that you take on, right? And I think that this is true for anybody, right? Like we all have very full lives um, and people that depend on us and um, we need to have like levels of emotional availability and all of that stuff. Uh, that when you are building something, you need to build it in a way that makes space for the person that you are outside of this project. And so like that quarterly component is also really important to that piece too. That you can do a really amazing thing and that probably sounds egotistical, but I think that what is happening is amazing. Um, <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. And not burn yourself out doing it. Yeah, you find what you do is you're finding a way that works for you. Exactly. That's for you, and that's the thing. You know, you have three children. Hello. Yeah, that, that, that can be can be busy enough. Um, but you're often <laughs> sewing, but it can be done to add something. It may not look yeah. the way folks think it should look, possibly. But it can still look great and work for you. I mean, it's like, okay, so I do it quarterly. Okay. I'm not going to do one every week and try to burn myself out. But quarterly works. It's an amazing piece every quarter. Here you go. I love it. I mm -hmm. love it. I love it. I think it's a great idea. Um, Thank you. So, okay. I like this. So, newsletter is kind of like the bridge in between what will, will be the bridge in between issues. Yeah. And so, now, is it the same 10 people who are writing? Do you all, do you have freelancers? Do you have people come in? Like, what, what's the, how's that work? Yeah. So for right now, this publication is solely pitch based. So okay. if people come to me and go, Hey, I want to write about, um, you know, this thing in podcasting or this other thing in podcasting. Um, so far I haven't actually said no to anybody. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> that's good. That's good. Right. Um, and I even have people who go, oh, my gosh, this sounds incredible. I really want to write for you, but I don't know what to write about. And so then I'm, we're also meeting and talking about, um, we have an article from somebody, um, you know, talking about being a woman in a rural area and podcasting, right? Because there's all these, right, like, oh, it's happening in New York and Los Angeles and Chicago. And it's like, okay, well, what about, uh, what about in rural New England? What's happening in there, right? Um, so, right, like that article was kind of born out of a conversation. Like, yes, I would like to write for this, but I've got all these ideas and I need some help to narrow it down. So like, that's the conversation that is very much happening. Um but yeah, it really is right now completely pitch based. Okay. So if you're thinking, "Wow, this sounds really cool. I'd like to write. I would like to hear from you." <laughs> I like that. I do like that. Okay, that's right. That's very good. Uh, it's good that all the stories you want to you want to include. So that's good so far. Yeah. Uh, that's that's great. Um, so, um, well, I think it's I think it's wonderful. First of all, I think it's wonderful that you're doing this, and. Um, any of us who feel marginalized, we have to create these media spaces. And I, I've worked with some wonderful podcast engineers and producers who are female. Um, I've worked with some wonderful uh, editors that are female. Uh, so they are out there, and a lot of them here in LA. Uh, uh, right now, we're on strike. We have several things on strike right now, so we're not doing a lot of stuff out here. Um, right, right. We have the WGA. I'm a strike supporter. Uh, WGA. And, yeah, so WGA. And for folks who don't know, WGA and SAG after are on strike. And there's some things that are complicated because some folks are writers through SAG AFTRA and some are, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Um, but a lot yeah. of projects I'm not doing right now. I've had uh, interviews canceled because they can't promote their product. So it's like it's a whole thing. But it's all yeah. for quality and stuff. But I was wondering mm -hmm. to know that there are some amazing women um, and also some amazing non binary. I had a great non binary uh, producer. Um, as I had someone actually transition. Um, <sighs> During my during our show and production and um, oh, I love that so much. I mean, he, <laughs> he, I was like, 
okay, I love it. And um, it's wonderful. Uh, we did that. So that happened also. So there are folks out there that you may not look at normally and think they can do anything, but they are doing technology. So I think that's a great idea mm -hmm. with technology. And they've been always, but we, we see these things like that movie with, you know, with the, with the black women and, and the space program, like we're, we're figuring out mm -hmm. women were scientists and women were mathematicians and women were, you know, and in World War II, the women were doing this, were putting together the, you know, the nuts and bolts, literally of, right. of planes. Like, like women were are parts of this and women are in computer work and computers. I mean, there's it's a lot that's, that you're right. You don't just, don't talk, don't talk about that. It's about all the guys. Like there are, there are women also there too, alongside and sometimes leading in many of the things. So. Right. Right. Um, well, and I think like with the hidden figures example, right, women were doing uh, all the computing because uh, it was seen as clerical work and therefore very boring. And then when the dudes figured out like, oh, wow, actually, this is super not boring. It switched right yeah. from female coded to male coded. Um <laughs> yeah, right. It did, didn't it? So, well, yeah, you it know. It did. Well, it's funny when I when I when I was in high school back a thousand years ago, um, you took typing class on on typewriters, right? So my grandmother, who started out as a secretary, now administrative assistant, it was a secretary, mm -hmm. told me, "You should learn all these different skills. And even though you're a man, you should learn them." And her, I, and I think back now, there was there was a two prong thing. One. So when I was in positions where I had women working for me in those positions, I understood the position. So mm -hmm. it made me more empathetic. And I, I, I see what she was doing. I didn't know at the time. I was like 19 years old at the time. Well, right. Like, you don't know what's going on. No, 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 no. I know now. I know now. But back then. Right. I know. Uh, but secondly, also, they're good skills to have. I just go, you'll always have a job. If you can type, you'll always have a job. Back then, we did before all this stuff happened. But literally, yeah, I always yeah. had a job. I always had a job. I always had some kind of job. I could type 80 words per minute. I do all this stuff. I can do dictation. I, I don't know all these little weird things that do have and 10 key and all I know all that stuff. And that over the years, it has come in handy, girl. It's come in handy. Right. But but there, but there were, but I'm saying, but women were doing those jobs way before I even entered the picture and doing it well. I mean, and doing it very well. Um, but you're right, not getting recognition. Yeah. You know, that and that ends. That ends today. No. Um, that's you know, <laughs> Um, I think it's a slow roll for the ending. I know. I'm still, I'm still, I'm positive. I'm like, we gotta, we gotta just, you know, we gotta get there. We got, we got, well, you have to think positive, I guess, on some level, because, because if you don't, then you'll just melt and fall apart. And right. Tell, I don't do that. I don't, I don't do, uh, I don't do negative. I do positive. Like, we gotta, we gotta think positive. Uh, because if I do, if I don't, I'll sit in the corner and cry and eat my hair. Now, I don't want to eat my hair. I mean, it's long, but I don't want to eat it. Right. Well, it looks like you're growing it out, so you don't want to like wreck all of the. <laughs> exactly. I don't want to eat it or anything. I want, I want to keep it, so I don't do it. But um, I think it's great. Sound sources. Um, dot substack. dot com. Right. Correctly. That is correct. When is the next issue coming out? When is the issue coming out? Sure. So, I think as we're closing out, a couple of things just to kind of plug Please. about it. Please. Right. So the very first edition of the magazine will be out October first. Um. Our next newsletter is going to be out on August 22nd. We just had one out today. Um, and I guess, I'm so sorry, this isn't live. What am I doing? Today being August 8th. Um, <laughs> That's fine. I was going to say something. Uh, you got it. You got it. Congratulations. Right. Um, the magazine itself is free. You're not going to have to pay for any of this fabulous content. But we would appreciate it very much if you did. And to incentivize folks uh, to pay to subscribe, we are running a giveaway ahead of the of our October 1st magazine launch. Um, anybody who signs up for a free subscription will get one entry into this giveaway. Anybody who signs up for a paid subscription by September 31st and then stays subscribed through the end of 2023 will get four entries into this giveaway to win a short mv7 um like microphone and tripod uh set they're good so folks. Good. good product yeah yeah so i know it meant a lot to me that they were like hey do you we'd love to donate some gear for you guys to do a giveaway because we think that what you're doing is awesome so like that was for me 
a great confidence boost, but, um, and then if they're, um, if you want to support the magazine in other ways, you can also find that on our Substack website as well. Now, are you on social media? Um, so right now we are really mostly on LinkedIn. Uh, as I think we all know, like, you know, what's going on on Facebook and all the other places. Um, and I try to limit myself on those platforms. So I'm not going to make other people go <laughs> to those platforms either. But we are on LinkedIn. Um, we are still working on this a little bit, but we're also on Pinterest. Every single one of our writers gets their own board to promote their projects outside of the magazine. So um, if you're looking at our writers and going, wow, this these women are amazing. I want to see what else they're doing. Um, Pinterest is where you can find all of that stuff. I love it. I like Pinterest. Come on there. I'm a uh, fan, uh, mostly for the recipes. For me, it's like, the, um, ideas <laughs> for parties and stuff. Mm, parties. Mm. I always get I need I need schemes and the color schemes and stuff. I love it. Um, Rachel, <laughs> thanks for being on the show. James, thank Bye. you so much for having me. <laughs> Pleasure. Uh, you are now friends with JLJ Media. So anytime you have anything big happening with the magazine or anything, you can always come back on and, and we'll support it. Let us know what's happening. But I wish you like the biggest success in the world. It's gonna be wonderful. It's gonna be great. When I it's gonna be wonderful. It's gonna be wonderful. Agreed. Yes. I don't think I have anything else to add. <laughs> uh, I'm James Love Jr. You can follow me where all James Love Juniors are on everywhere. Uh, and I'm also on LinkedIn, actually. I, uh, my LinkedIn was hacked after nine years. So oh, I no. have to start over. So I'm starting over again. Someone hacked my LinkedIn of all places. I mean, uh, so why? I, don't even I mean, they're why. obviously just jealous yes. of your incredible professional career Thank because you. it is incredible. <laughs> You still Google me, folks, if I don't think I do. But they, they took me off. I just have to start over again. So I'm starting over. Because uh, I actually like LinkedIn. I actually like LinkedIn a lot. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but so you can find me there, too. But uh, the show, we're also on Facebook for In Between the Pages of James Lodge. You can follow us there. Read books, folks. Books are great. Listen to podcasts, audio dramas, which I do 17 of them. Uh, also listen to audio books. Listen to anything that's print and digital. Support the small business. Support the small artist. Support the indie artists. Uh, support the arts period. I just, I think arts are just as important as everything else. Politics and health and it actually helps all that stuff. It's been, there's been mm -hmm. studies that have shown that. Helps with math and science. But I'm all about the arts. And I'm all about getting in between the pages of everything. I'm James Ott Jr. We'll talk to you next time.